even when it doesn't seem to win. My praise will be my weapon. My praise will be my weapon. Even when it doesn't look like it. Even when it doesn't seem to win. My praise will be my weapon.
you bound. It doesn't matter what had you shackled or chained. When the Spirit of the Lord rubs in, there is a freedom. That, oh, my God. Oh, I'm thankful for the freedom of God. I'm thankful that God has set me free from every spirit of bondage, from every chain and every shackle. I'm thankful that there's liberty in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Woo! I know, I know. Some of y'all all ready to go. Some of y'all, some of y'all got your feel on, on donuts this morning. You're on carb overload right now, and you're not feeling it. But some of y'all need to worship to burn off some of the calories you just consumed a little bit a little while ago. <laughs> because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me, my soul. about. I know it's Father's Day, and we're here to honor all of our fathers, especially our Heavenly Father. Amen, somebody. But it's always in order to praise God. It's all, oh my Lord, have a, listen, what better day to honor our Heavenly Father than right now to offer up praise and thanksgiving and worship under the King of kings and the Lord of lords and declare his goodness and his mercy and his grace. What better way than on Father's Day for somebody to be set free completely from addictions and from bondages? Whoa! shout in the name of Jesus. God been good to anyone this week? I said, has God been good to anybody this week? <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. The old song says, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. <laughs> Woo! Y'all thought it was bad last week. These jokers up here trying to get me in trouble today. <laughs> oh, Y'all better quit. Y'all better quit.
service like this. This is how you know you have good church. Somebody placed somebody's earring on my on my podium. I guess to let you know if you're missing an earring from the last couple weeks, this may be yours. So you can come claim it after service. I'll put it right there. at me and tell me that's that's foolish that's foolish why would you do that listen I don't care what you think I'm not here to impress you my worship is not for you my praise is not for you but it's unto the one it is unto the one that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think it is unto the one that brought me out it is unto the one that picked me up it is a oh my god i said pastor why, why'd you do that with the earring because i want to let you know we're gonna have to we have to put a lost and found box up here i'm, I'm speaking it i'm prophesying it right now we're going to have a lost and found box up here at the platform for people that lose jewelry and hair ties and whatever else comes off. And listen, it don't matter as long as you're giving God the glory. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> she said, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. If it wasn't for the Lord who is on my side, <laughs> Woo! Good morning, LRC. Thank you all for being here today on this wonderful Father's Day. And I reiterate and say happy Father's Day to all of our fathers in the house today. Every father that is watching via live stream, we say happy Father's Day. We're so thankful for you. And when I say father, that... That doesn't just mean biological. I'm saying fathers, stepdads, mentors, father figures. Amen, somebody. Oh, y'all got to quit now. I'm, I'm thankful to have my brother and his wife here again this week. They, uh... They got to be careful to begin to make this a habit. And I ain't, I, nah, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to keep that to myself. I know some of y'all are thinking it, but I'm not going to say it. We're just praying the Lord's will. 
be done. That's almost said. And I, I'm thankful to have my, my oldest son back with us this week playing drums. One of these days, y'all hear me? I'm going to speak prophetically right now. One of these days, we're going to have a full band again. And my old sinking self ain't going to have to play the drums no more. <laughs> Woo. Well, thank you for being here today. I, I know I know for some of y'all this is maybe a little strange, maybe a little out there. That's all right, though. The Bible declares to praise the Lord in the dance. The Bible declares to, to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. The Bible says, clap your hands, all you people. The Bible says, lift holy hands without wrath and without doubt. Everything we've done here today is biblical. So you don't have to worry about us being out, out, of, out of the Bible and out of context. It's all, it's all in the Word of God. We're just thankful. We're a thankful people. We're thankful for what the Lord has done in our lives. And so, again, thank you all for being here today on this Father's Day. I, I hope all of you enjoyed the, the gourmet donuts that we had here today. I, I had someone tell me that we need to celebrate Father's Day once a month so that we can get these donuts once a month. But that, that was a special treat, and I, I told you we want to do something a little bit different besides what we know, because we normally have donuts every Sunday. And so we want to do a little something different for our fathers to let you know we love you and appreciate you and all that you do and all that you do to pour into our families and this church. Amen. And so if you didn't notice, when you walked over to the Fellowship Hall, we left our VBS decorations up, and uh, we, we threw a camping theme for, <laughs> for our fathers. <laughs> And we, we thought about taking it down, and I told my wife, I was like, no, let's leave it up. But for those of the those that weren't able to be at VBS and help serve or help volunteer, and, and for those that, that haven't seen it, we wanted to leave it up and let you go and look at it and see how, how much hard work was put into, into our VBS. Amen? So I, I, I want to, number one, commend my wife. She's, she spent, amen. She, she spent many, many months and many, many hours preparing and getting everything ready. And that was her vision, and that's what she wanted to come up with. And I, I'm not going to start naming helpers and all that. She had a lot of help, too. She had a lot of help. And uh, so thank you for all of you that helped um, put up and all of you that are going to help tear down. Can I get an amen, somebody? And uh, so it was great. We had a, we had a phenomenal VBS. Um, I, I think we had uh, about 36 or so kids uh, every night, which was which was awesome. Many kids that don't attend this church um, were here at VBS, and so that was that was an awesome treat. And so we're so thankful that we could pour the love of Jesus into them and let them know that we love them and that, that Jesus loves them. And uh, so it was a phenomenal VBS. And uh, but I know all of us who volunteered and worked and served, we're we're glad that it's over. <laughs> three three days is a long time. And, uh, but it was great, and so thank you. Thank you to every volunteer and all of you that helped serve um, during our VBS, whatever your job was, whatever uh, whatever area you helped out in, thank you. We couldn't have done it without you, and uh, we're so appreciative of you. Yeah, that's right. Give, you, give yourselves a hand. Amen, amen. What, what a great time. And uh, so I, I don't know how many more announcements. I didn't even write down announcements today, but... Uh, don't forget, uh, First Steps, if you've not signed up for First Steps, it's going to begin in July. Um, there's still a sign-up sheet at the welcome desk, and uh, we'll leave that up until um, the, the last Sunday of this month, June, um, just so we'll know how much food to prepare because we'll, we'll serve you lunch immediately following service. We'll have um, kids care, um, taking care of your children afterwards. You don't have to worry about anything like that. Just come and uh, hang out, and, and our First Steps is just us letting you know um, about our church, who we are, what we believe. And then uh, we like to figure out your gifts and your talents. And uh, so we know where to plug you in and put you to work. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. You, you don't need to be a part of a church where you can't serve. God hasn't called us just to come and sit on the seat with our arms folded and look at everybody. Come on, somebody. This is your church as much as it is my church. This is our church. And we are the body of Christ. 
and we all need one another. And so we need you to plug in. We need you to help serve. And so that's what that is a part of. So if you haven't signed up, sign up so we can get a count and be ready for that um, coming in July. I don't. Is that all my announcements? I think I got the thumbs up, so we're good. Amen, amen. Well, today is Father's Day, and I'm not going to tell you how long I'm going to preach. I may be an hour and a half, but we'll just go with it. <laughs> Some of y'all just got real nervous. Listen, I, I already fed you, so it's... Uh, I told my wife when, when she was trying to worry about the donuts, and, and and I told her, I was like, don't worry about it, I'm going to take care of it all. And I think that scared her even more. And I did, I took care of it. I called I called the donut place, I told him how many I wanted, and, uh, and Daryl offered to stop by and pick them up for me, and he did so, and I'm thankful for that. And uh, so we had plenty of donuts, and uh, so we're good to go. So that took something off her plate, and so I... I think she was a real little relieved when, <laughs> when she knew we had enough. And uh, so to God be all the glory. Amen. If you have your Bibles today, I, I want to bring to you a, a Father's Day message, uh, maybe a little bit different today. And uh, when, when I give you the, the book of the Bible, you're going to be like, what? Um, but if you've got your Bibles, if you'll turn with me to the book of Job. <laughs> I, that's the reaction I thought I'd get. Or what's he's lost his mind? Job chapter one, and I'm going to begin reading uh, verses one through five. If you got it, or if you see it on the screen, shout amen. And the Bible says there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the east. His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one on his day, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and consecrate them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. I want to simply preach to you from this thought, this subject today, a godly inheritance. A godly inheritance. Lord, I, I thank you for your presence that we feel in this house. I thank you, Lord, for how you've already moved, how you've already ministered to the people in this place today. God, and I'm praying that as I deliver this word, God, that I believe you have given me, I pray, O oh Lord, that you would help us to hear it, help us to receive it. God, help us, O oh Lord, just to, to open our minds and our hearts, O oh God, and to hear from you today. God, let this word be planted into the depths of our soul. God, and we'll be careful to give you glory and honor and praise in the name of Jesus. We do pray. Amen. Amen. High five your neighbor as you see them and tell them you're good to, it's good to see them today. A godly inheritance. Oh, I forgot to mention. Y'all digging my shirt today? It says dad, and then it has my boys' names underneath it, Peyton, Carson, and Ryland. Miss Robin uh, come up to me the, the last night of VBS, and she said, because our VBS shirts were light blue, and she's like, you like that color? I was like, I love blue. Blue's one of my favorite colors. All colors are blue. And she's like, well, good, and she handed me this bag, and I had the T-shirt in it. She already had it made up, and uh, I was like, you know what? I'm going to wear that on Father's Day. Um, besides being saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and marrying my wife, my boys are my my third greatest treasure, yeah. and uh, I'm thankful for them, and I'm thankful um, to have three great sons today, and uh, I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing in their life. Job's high moral character and devout faithfulness to the Lord provides a godly example of how fathers are to faithfully love and lead those under their care. 
And so Job demonstrates a godly example of how to lead in faith and love and speech and deed. And through his example, we, we learn to foster a safe environment for children and to develop deep relationships and prayerfully guide the next generation to develop a relationship with God. Has anyone in this house today ever struggled with finding the perfect Father's Day gift for the dad in your life? I, I think every hand should have went up right there. Perhaps it's because the dad you're purchasing a gift for already has everything that they could ever need or want. Or maybe it's due to their pickiness towards a particular brand or product that has led to the rejection of a previous gift. You know, one of those things you get them to wear and they hang it in the closet and the tags are still on it three or four years later. Or perhaps they just don't want to be bombarded with more stuff that only ends up unused or sitting in the closet. But it can be hard to purchase a gift for a man because men have likely already purchased the items they want for themselves. I, I tell my wife, my, if I want something, I'm going to get it. I ain't waiting for Father's Day. But additionally, men can be conditioned to feel uncomfortable receiving gifts due to finding their value and caring for others above their own self-interest. And consequently, men are often unaware of what they might want, or even if they are aware, they often have difficulty receiving from the people who care about them. One man in the Bible who would have been very hard to purchase a gift for would have been Job. I just read about everything this man had. He had need of nothing. Job lived in the land of Uz. And in the first chapter we see that he was blessed by God. He had ten children, seven boys, and three girls. Thousands of domesticated animals, very many servants, and leading him to be greater in wealth than all the others in the surrounding area. His riches would have made him a well-known sage among the Easterners. He had everything men in his day aspired to achieve, a large, healthy family, great wealth, and a high-standing community. Yet, despite his influence and his affluence in his community, Job took time to faithfully serve God in a priestly role for his family, providing an example to, to us of how fathers are to faithfully lead those under their care. Now, I know every message you've probably heard about Job has been about the devil coming and God allowing him to take everything from him and then giving it back to him twofold. We dance and we shout about that, and that's all well and good. And the, and the, but the scripture introduces Job as a blameless and upright man who revered God and turned from evil. And he exhibited a high moral character and integrity in his dealings with people and was devout in his faithfulness to the Lord. And as the head or the priest of his home, Job's diligence and steadfastness to his faith provided an example for all his children to follow. Similarly, Paul urges young Timothy to set a godly example to his congregation in speech and conduct, love, faith, and purity. Go, go to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. Paul says, Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love and faith and in purity. Parents, especially fathers, are called to lead their children by demonstrating a godly example for them. I'm not here to beat fathers up today because I am one. But I'm here to encourage fathers to let us know how important our role is to our family and to our children and to the church. This responsibility isn't just limited to parents, but it is an example that we are called to as adults to, who play a role in any child's life 
be it as extended family or a family friend or as a leader or as a teacher. So I ask us all this question today. What example are we setting in our conviction to the Christian faith? Is it an example that our children or those who are younger than us will look up to and follow in our footsteps? See, Job's children, the Bible says, regularly feasted together at one another's houses. They threw parties. And while it is unclear whether the feasts they celebrated were daily or yearly birthday celebrations or certain annual festivals, we find Job's children shared a healthy relationship with one another for extended periods of time. And they must have enjoyed each other's company since they gathered regular as adults, but presumably with their own families and living in their own homes away from their father. But this deep sibling connection and friendship would not have developed overnight. It's likely to have been fostered over a long time from a young age in a safe, family-focused environment under Job's leadership. Imagine with me today what our family relationships could become if our children were led to enjoy their time spent with one another even when they're not forced to be together. I know siblings fight. My brother and I fought quite often when we were younger. But now that we're older and married and all, we all have our own kids, now we're like best friends. And that's the way the relationships develop. And that's what happened with Job's children. It, 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 it happens over a, a period of time. And so how can we create memorable moments and foster healthy connections with our children, between our children, that, that will carry into adulthood? Because not all family gatherings are as enjoyable as what Job's children experienced. <laughs> Y'all know, every family's got a cray-cray. And if you don't know who it is, it might be you. <laughs> Woo. Perhaps when your family gathers together, they're derailed by conversations around politics. When sports is discussed, emotions hit the fan. When a little friendly competition of games come into the equation, it gets a little personal and judgmental. But more than anything, Job desired that his children would remain close to God. I need you to hear me. He didn't want any sin, be it hidden or public, to come between them and their relationships with their Heavenly Father. Oh, I hope you're hearing what I'm telling you. And so to combat this, Job, the Bible says, sacrificed burnt offerings, oh, hallelujah, to the Lord early in the morning following their time of coming together and feasting just in case. Somebody shout, just in case. Just in case one of his children had cursed God silently in their hearts during the party. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. And so Job knew there is no remission of sin without the shedding of sacrificial blood. This was before Jesus died on the cross. This was Old Testament, Old Covenant, where they had to, uh, to kill animals for the blood to, to, to cover up their sins. You with me? So Job led his children before the Lord at the first opportunity to be purified of sin by continually making intercessory sacrifices to God on their behalf. The Bible says Job was righteous and upright. So he wasn't doing it for him. He was doing it for his kids that may mess up. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Listen, while parents today do not need to sacrifice an animal, thank you, Jesus, on behalf of their children's sins, parents do need 
to prayerfully lead their children to understand the atoning sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf to cleanse the sins of those who put their faith in him. How often do we, as dads or parents, share about the sacrifice of Jesus with our children and those who are under our care? How regularly are we making intercessor, intercessory prayers to God for the salvation of our children? See, Job's moral character... And his upright devotion to God greatly influenced how he led his family and his community. This lifestyle wasn't something that sprouted unexpectedly overnight. But rather it was a habit that Job performed continually. And similarly, the calling of fathers to lead their family to develop vibrant, healthy relationships with God and with one another cannot be a one-time or sporadic event. Setting a godly example in faith and love and speech and in deed. And by fostering a safe environment for children to develop deep relationships and prayerfully leading a child to a relationship with Jesus is a daily decision with a longer term perspective in mind. So I ask us all today, is there a daily priority or perspective that we need to alter to better lead our family to a relationship with Jesus? See, because raising children today is more complicated than it's ever been. Not only because we live in an era of modern technology and a digital era in which everything is computerized but because we compete with the world of entertainment and public schools and even governments who have and propagate values that are different from ours how should we as fathers raise our children rightly if you're taking notes I want to give you five ways that we should raise our children right And these are simple. These aren't complicated or profane, but these are just reminders. Five ways that we should raise our children right. The first way is that fathers should teach their children God's truth. Fathers should teach their children God's truth. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. I'm, I'm sorry, chapter 6, verses 4 through 7. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Boy, I could stop and preach right there for an hour. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. Oh, my Lord. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. Because in the Old Testament, teaching children was given to parents. Oh, come on, I need some amens now. I said in the Old Testament, teaching children was given to the parents, not to the priests or the prophets. Or, let me, let me break it down for you. In our context today, not to the pastors and not to the ministers and not to the Sunday school teachers. Listen, it's not up to the pastor or the minister or the Sunday school teacher or, or the youth pastor to tell your children about Jesus. When we make it to, to the rapture of the church and we're standing before God, it's going to be your responsibility as to whether our children know about Jesus or not. All right, I'm moving on. Number two, fathers should spend time with their children. Spend time with your children. How can a father teach his children if he doesn't spend time with them? 
Fathers have many responsibilities. I get that. We understand that. But in some cultures, he is the breadwinner or provides for his family needs. And I, I know in the United States today, we, uh, the, the, both usually the father and the mother are working, sharing the responsibility, and that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. But because of that, the, uh, there are in many cultures fathers who work hard and long hours, and as a result, they ignore uh, another responsibility, uh, which is helping raise their children because they're too busy with their jobs and they have no time for their children. And as a result, they may successfully fulfill their family's financial needs, but not their children's emotional needs. Research shows that the absence of a father has caused so many problems in their children's lives. Number three, fathers should pray daily for their children. As parents, we are limited. We can only watch our children sometimes. We can't be with them at all times. When they go off to college, we rarely see them. Amen. Got one in college and one fixing to go. So when they move out from your home and begin to go to college and venture out in their own areas of life, you've got to trust that what you've instilled in them is going to stick with them. But more than that, you better be letting a prayer come from your lips every single day for your children. Because we can always pray for them. King David prayed this prayer for his son Solomon. Go to 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 19. King David said, Grant to Solomon, my son, a whole heart that he may keep your commandments, my God, your testimonies and your statutes, performing all that he may build the palace for which I have made provision. What a beautiful prayer. Keep him, O God. Number four, I'm moving on quickly. Number four, fathers should not force their children to follow what he wants. We see it. We see it time and time again. Because the father was a doctor, or the mother was a doctor, then they want the children to be doctors. And the child's like, I don't want to be a doctor. Because I'm a pastor, I would never force and want my children to be pastors if they were never called. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, I wouldn't want anybody to be a pastor if you're not called. I mean, my life, I'm only 22, and look what it's done to me. We should never force our children to follow what we want. Proverbs 22 and, and verse 6. You know this verse, very familiar verse. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. What you place in them, what you put in them, uh, from a Jesus perspective, is going to be there always. Even if they venture away from it, even if they walk away from it, it's always going to be in their heart. They're always going to know. And listen, in that scripture, in the way he should go, is literally saying according to his way. Hear me. It, it may mean according to his personality, his temperament, his, his responses, or his stage in life. On the other hand, it could tell how he ought to go. The Hebrew grammar permits either interpretation. However, the context favors the latter view. Way in Proverbs usually means a person's path through life, not one's personality, not his disposition, not his stage in life. Consequently, the verse says, the parent should train a child in the way of wisdom to live in the fear of God. Nothing else matters. Number five, last point. Father should be an, an example for his children. in 
this church. I, I used to be a student. I was a student pastor for 11 years, so I, I know the ins and outs of all that. I know it's changed quite a bit uh, over the years, but uh, there's still a base there. But I, I've had parents tell me, well, uh, my, 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 my teenager's not really getting anything out of service, and they're not really worshiping, and they're not really doing anything. All the while, the parent's sitting in the back row of the church with their arms folded, never coming to the altar, never lifting their hand, never lifting their voice, never clapping up. Come on, somebody. We are to be the examples to our children. Our children will follow in our footsteps. And this is what Paul says to Titus. Go to Titus chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. Watch this. He tells Titus, Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works, and in your teaching show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opponent may be put to shame having nothing evil to say about us. Children will often model their behaviors after our examples. Likely your kids are watching you even right now and they're observing your actions without you even knowing. When they do, what do they see? What do they hear? How do our activities contribute to their interactions with their siblings and their friends? How, how can we guide our kids to set up a good example? I'm hurrying along. Fathers have a responsibility to teach their children the faith. And as a father, are we being obedient to the Lord? I've got a few verses of scripture that I want to read to you. Psalm chapter 119. Verses 89 through 96, the Bible says, Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. Somebody say, all generations. You have established the earth and, and it stands fast. By your appointment they stand this day, for all things are your servants. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my afflictions. I will never forget your precepts. For by them you have given me life. I am yours. Save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked lie in wait to destroy me, but I consider your testimonies. I have seen a limit to all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. If you didn't know, Psalm, Psalm chapter 119 is the longest psalm and the longest chapter in the Bible. It is also a celebration of God's word. And it also includes passages celebrating the goodness of God. And the faithfulness of God is not dependent, hear me, on our actions, but on the very character of God. And so thankfully, whether we are faithful or not, from generation to generation, God remains faithful. <laughs> Woo. However, y'all knew there was going to be a however. Parents are not exempt from their responsibility in raising their children in the faith. Studies show that children with involved fathers, stepdads, or father figures are less likely to get in trouble with the law, and they tend to do better in school and are more likely to hold a job. And so as a father, it is important to recognize the importance of being present and teaching our children the faith. Addressing the fathers in his letter to the Ephesians, Paul wrote this in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Fathers have a responsibility to teach their children about God. This as much uh, a command from God as the, uh, as the command to not to steal. But while the command not to steal is a passive command, it says don't steal, the, the command here is an active command. Fathers are to do something. Did y'all hear that? Although they're equal, one says don't is to refrain from, but the other is do. <laughs> Namely, to help their children grow up to understand 
and know God. According to the Lifeway Research Group, the Sunday with the lowest church attendance is Father's Day. And according to research, if a father doesn't attend church, but the mother does with the children, only one child out of 50 will grow up to become a regular attender of worship service. One in 50. As fathers, we have been giving our marching orders that they can carry them out without worrying about the outcome. Psalm 119 and verse 90, we just read it as a firm reminder that, that God's faithfulness will endure from generation to generation. His faithfulness endures because of His character and not our perfect instruction. There's nothing good within us. Every good and perfect gift comes from God above. And so this knowledge can free fathers from worry and encourage them to trust God completely with the faith of their children. Listen, I understand parenting is not easy. And it gets harder by the day. But it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile when you watch them grow up and they come into their adult years of life. Because there's coming a time in your child's life that they're going to make the decision on their own. And you can no longer make it for them. There's coming a time where you can no longer make them go to church. But you hope and you pray that everything you've invested in them is going to keep them so that they want to. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. There's a young son of a pastor who had become very ill. And after undergoing an exhaustive series of tests, the father was told that his son had terminal illness. And the boy had been born again of the water and of the Spirit, so his father knew that death would usher him into the glory of God. But he wondered how to tell his young son that he would soon die. And after earnestly seeking the direction of the Holy Spirit, he went with a heavy heart through the hospital ward to his son's bedside. First, he read a passage of Scripture and had a time of prayer with his son. Then he gently told him, the doctors could promise him only a few more days to live. And the dad asked the son, are you afraid to meet Jesus? And blinking away a few tears, the boy said bravely, no, not if he's like you, dad. My God, what a responsibility. May our lives show to our children and our families and to everyone around us that Jesus lives in us. May God help us all to be good fathers and to leave a godly inheritance to those who come after us. Although Job had it all, was very wealthy his focus was on praying for his children and making sure that they had a relationship with God you know the story the Lord's just dropping this into my spirit right now you know the story the devil went to God God said you can do anything you want to him just don't kill him and he took all took all of his herds, all of his animals. He lost all of his children. Now hear me. This is what the Lord just dropped into my spirit. Job was a very wealthy man, had it all. And what if his focus would have been on that, saving for his children, and then his children lose their life? most important thing in life is to make sure they're right with God. And so every morning he rose up early and made sacrifices to God and prayed continually just in case 
They may not have done anything wrong, but just in case they did, I want them to be covered. My God, parents, what if, uh, what if we had that, that decision, that moment in life that we said, I, I don't know that they're doing anything wrong, but, but just in case, God, I'm covering them by the blood of Jesus. Listen, nothing else in this world matters. I, it, it's good. Listen, I, I know we all want to have nice homes and nice vehicles, and we all want to work the perfect job, and we all want to make as much money as possible. Amen. But none of that matters. We gain the whole world, the Scripture says, and lose our soul. Or as parents, if we gain the whole world, and lose our children's soul. It's not going to matter. We can't take any of this stuff with us. All the riches, all the fame, all the material things this world has to offer cannot compare to glory that is coming if we live our lives for God. There is coming a day and a time when we will all be resurrected in the second coming of Jesus Christ. And in that moment, we better make sure we're ready to go. here to tell you and encourage you today that as fathers in this world more than leaving an earthly inheritance God is calling us to leave our families a godly inheritance I'll tell you I'll, I'll probably never be rich you don't get rich being a pastor I know some of y'all think I'm rich but I'm not I promise you probably will never have very much to leave my children in this earth. But I can guarantee you one thing. One thing they'll know is their King. They're going to know who God is. And they're going to know who to turn to in times of trouble. And they're going to know who to lean on when times get tough. Come on, somebody. And they're going to know they can come to their parents when they find themselves in trouble. And we're not going to judge them. And we're not going to turn our backs on them. And what, you know what we're going to do? We're going to say, all right, let's pray. Come on. That is the answer to it all. Let's bow our heads right now. And we're going to pray and ask God to help us right now. In this, Come on. We better make sure we're covering our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren in prayer. Come on. It's our duty. It's our responsibility to make sure. My God. They may not know how to pray for themselves yet. And they're depending on us as the overseer of their life to make sure we're covering them. about the earthly inheritance but it's about the godly inheritance and just today as our as God our heavenly father has given us the opportunity to receive his inheritance in heaven with him for all eternity nothing else matters I want to see Jesus face to face I want to make it to heaven. I want to worship him for all eternity but not only that I want to see my children and my family there with me I make it and my children don't if I make it and my children don't because I failed to pray over them and pray for them then the blood's on my hands fathers let's make sure that we're leaving a godly inheritance for our families and for our children Nothing else matters. Nothing else is more important. I want to be like Job. Every morning, every day, calling my children's names out before the Lord and saying, God, help them. Be with them. Listen, even if your children are older and moved out and married and have children of their own, you can still pray over them. You can still speak their names out to the throne of God. 
microphone. You never lose that responsibility. I know you've raised them to the best of your ability and you've done all you can do, but you can still pray over them. You can still call their names out to God. Because you never know. There may come a time in their life when they can't pray for themselves. And it's going to be your prayers as a parent that has gone before the throne of God. Interceding on their behalf. It makes all the difference. So I'm not even speaking to just fathers now, but mothers too. I know this is Father's Day, but we as parents have responsibility. Maybe you're in a home now that doesn't have a father, and that's all right. You can still lean and depend on your heavenly father. He'll be a father to you better than you've ever experienced before in your life. I know there are people here from all backgrounds. Maybe you grew up with an abusive father. Maybe you grew up without a father. Maybe maybe, uh, whatever the circumstance is, that I've come to tell you that, that God can be the father that... that that you've never known, the father that that you've never had a good relationship with. God can be so much more to you today. It doesn't matter what you've experienced in life. I've come to tell you that God wants to love on you today and he wants to shed his love on you because he gave his life on that old rugged cross. He shed his precious blood at Calvary to show you how much he loves you. To show you how much he cares for you. Oh, what a great love that he's given us today. I'm not going to even do an altar call. I wonder if every father in this house today could stand. And I did this for Mother's Day. I I just want to pray a blessing on every father. That the Lord would keep you and help you and give you the direction that you need. Guidance. help raise or even if you've already raised your children to let there be a prayer on your lips for your children to speak positivity in their life to speak life over them to speak blessing over them to speak favor over them I'm sure when Job was praying for his children I'm sure he, he prayed for God to cover them and to protect them and that God would forgive them and uh, of any sin that they had committed. But I'm sure he also prayed for a blessing and favor in their life as well. Because he knew the blessing and the favor of God. But before all that, he wanted to pray a covering over them. Lord, I thank you right now. I thank you for this Father's Day service that you have blessed us with. Another opportunity, oh God, to love you and to, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I thank you for every father that is here today in this building under the sound of my voice. God, I am praying today, God, that this word that has been spoken and delivered, I pray, God, that it would find good ground, that it would begin to grow, that it would begin to flourish. God, that it would begin to grow into something beautiful. God, I pray that you would help us to recognize and understand the responsibility that we as fathers have in raising our children, oh God, and to being an example, oh God, and to helping show them the way, God, that they should take uh, in living for you and serving you. God, I pray that every father here today would be an example to their children, no matter what age they may be. God, an example of serving you and worshiping you, God, and giving you all the glory that is due your name. God, I pray, God, protection upon our fathers. God, a covering over them, a covering over their mind and over their heart. God, as they continually seek you and draw closer to you. God, I pray, God, that that would be evident in their lives and that as their children watch and as their children look and as their children learn, God, I pray, oh Lord, God, that this example would be passed down to every child. God, I pray blessing upon our fathers. I pray favor upon our fathers. God, but more than leaving an earthly inheritance, I pray, oh God, that you would help us to recognize the importance of leaving a godly inheritance. More than anything, oh Lord, we want our children to be saved. More than anything, we want to see our children serving you and living for you. More than anything, oh God, 
We want you first and foremost in our life. So God, I'm praying right now that you would just help us to be the fathers that you've called us to be. Most of all, God, let our relationship with our children reflect your relationship with us. God, for you so loved us that you gave your life. And so, Lord, in return, help us to reflect that same love to our children. God, we can't do it without you. We're nothing. We're incomplete. Our life is meaningless without you. And so, God, I pray that you would just help us and give us direction and guidance. God, every day in raising our children and praying over our children, calling their names out before your throne, help us, O oh Lord, to be the best fathers that we can be. Bless our fathers here today. And we give you all the glory, and we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus. And the church said, amen, amen, amen. Happy Father's Day. God bless you. We love you. I hope you have an awesome week this week. Don't forget Wednesday prayer back here in the sanctuary, 7 p.m. You don't want to miss it. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. And uh, come expecting, ready for God to move and to speak here among us. We'll see you Wednesday. And if not, we'll see you next Sunday at 10 for Restoring Realness, 11 o'clock for worship. God bless you. We love you. Shake hands. Hug necks. Let somebody know you love them and appreciate them. And we'll see you back here on Wednesday. doing?